The only thing worse than bad food is maybe weird food. Of course, there's nothing wrong with experimenting. Thanks to that, we've created the recipes for many dishes. But sometimes too much creativity is not a good thing. Gordon Ramsay proved that many times in Kitchen Nightmares, where he tested his stomach and palate to the experiments of many bad restaurants. From grilled salads to pizzas the size of Captain America's shield, these are the weirdest dishes Gordon has tasted in Kitchen Nightmares. Let's start with a festive atmosphere at Fiesta Sunrise, the Mexican restaurant owned by Vic, Patty, and Yolanda in upstate New York. The place lives up to its name with its Mexican fiesta theme, and they even welcome their customers with tequila. It's wonderful. Well, it was. Much of Fiesta Sunrise's failure was due to its menu, which combined too many items from Mexican cuisine. Remember, more food is not synonymous with quality. Vic himself recommended Ramsey to try the combo plate, consisting of tacos, burritos, and enchiladas. The dish's name was much more appealing than the result, as it was a mix of items that could not even be recognized. See that? It looks like someone's been sick on my plate. With difficulty, Gordon discovered the meat behind all the cheese and found it too tough to chew and the chicken was too dry. The dish was everything except a fiesta. Speaking of countries' cuisines, what better idea than to combine Italian and Japanese food? That was Chef Akira's million-dollar idea for a Sushi Co. restaurant in Thousand Oaks, California. But honestly, he was the only one who thought it was a good idea. I wouldn't recommend it. How bad does it have to be for his own waitresses to turn him down? After sampling Asian dishes with ingredients fresh out of the freezer and watching Akira nervously pacing the restaurant, Gordon dares to order the infamous sushi pizza. And it's as disappointing as he expected. In theory, the dish consists of rice, salmon, crab, mayonnaise, and some cheese. But it looks unappetizing and it tastes worse. At first bite, Ramsay spits it out immediately. That is an insult to pizza yeah, <laughs> and Japanese food. The combination was questionable enough, and they made it with bad ingredients. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Sometimes, weird dishes are not only about strange combinations, but also about preparation methods that don't match the ingredients. At Park's Edge Restaurant, located in Inman Park, Georgia, Owners and friends Jorge and Richard believe they would revolutionize the culinary world with their innovative way of grilling lettuce. And they partially succeeded, because they reached kitchen nightmares. When Ramsay sees the grilled Caesar salad on the menu, he can't resist ordering it. Because in his extensive career as a chef, he's never had the honor of tasting such a dish. To me, it's Chef Ramsay's just another customer. I admire Chef Jorge's determination, but we all know he's wrong. Finally, the grilled Caesar salad arrives, as grilled as its chef promised. But they actually grilled the lettuce. <laughs> See why Gordon isn't just another customer? After mocking the dish with the guests, Gordon begins to dissect it, discovering that the chicken is dry and the salad in general is too spicy. Jorge and Richard, next time you open a restaurant, learn to differentiate between food that should be grilled and food that shouldn't, please. Oh, but wait, Park's Edge didn't have enough to appear once on this list. In this case, we have the sesame grilled salmon. At least salmon can be grilled. The problem is that the dish looks like... It's like the bottom of a birdcage. And I was just thinking that it looks familiar. Plus, the dish is overloaded with ingredients, with rice, green curry, some white sauce, and strawberries. Yes, strawberries. It's like the United Nations of main courses there. So what does that flavor explosion taste like? Well, I guess Ramsay didn't like it too much because he forced Richard to taste it. Thanks to that, Richard recognized that his partner Jorge's creativity was going a bit too far. But how creative can you get with pizza? I mean, there are countless types of pizzas, although they all generally follow a recipe and a pattern to prepare it. Except maybe at Sushi Co. At Pantalones, owner and chef Pete Favelios followed a traditional way of cooking his pizzas, 
and had so much faith in his ability that the restaurant was promoted as the best pizzas in Denver, Colorado. However, I think Pete had a bit of a misconception about what it meant to be the best, as most of his dishes were gigantic. And you can expect nothing less from his signature dish, the sausage pizza that might as well be a tire due to how big it is. It's like the pizza that ate Denver. Beyond that, it looked like a normal pizza, but its consistency was not that of a normal pizza. It was so greasy that the cheese was falling off like water. As for the dough, Pete presumed to have one of the best recipes for making it. Yet the pizza Gordon received was raw. I think Chef Ramsey's problem is that he hasn't tasted a classic pizza before. Nah, he likes it that way. Fortunately, Pete managed to learn from his mistakes, and to this day, Pantalones is still open and getting good reviews. The best part? The sausage pizza is still gigantic. If there's anything easier to prepare than a pizza, it might be a burger. There's nothing more classic and delicious than a burger with a tasty piece of meat accompanied by vegetables and a good selection of sauces. What can go wrong with such an easy dish? Well, at the classic American restaurant in West Babylon, New York, many things went wrong. Just from the name of the place, you can imagine the menu. Traditional American food with an emphasis on meat and dishes like burgers. But of course, they didn't think a normal burger would be enough to please their diners. So they created a special dish, the Bomb Burger. Everyone loves the bomb. That's one of our house specialties. We're definitely going to enjoy that one. Well, Ramsey, did you enjoy it? Where's the burger? That's a good start. Turns out the bomb burger is so explosive that it's loaded with too many ingredients, especially cheese. Underneath all that, Ramsey could find the burger, but he couldn't even chew it. It has to be the biggest insult to every mother in America. Now, that's a real bomb. I'm already missing dishes with ingredients that shouldn't go together. Speaking of dishes with ingredients that shouldn't go together, Luckily, there is Trobiano's Italian Restaurant in Great Neck, New York. This restaurant was already a challenge for Gordon as soon as he arrived, since the owner, Anthony, opened the place thanks to his father-in-law's money. Now that's a great promise. Even with all the family tension, Anthony was confident that his food was the best, especially the chicken wrap shrimp. Not exactly a never-before-seen combination, but not exactly the Italian way to prepare it. Looks like chicken, tastes like shrimp. I don't know if that's good or bad. Probably the latter. Noticing how chewy the shrimp is, Gordon doesn't hesitate to send it back. The shrimp was too hard. Rock hard like a bullet. And that's Joe, Anthony's father-in-law, who, as we can see, is quite regretful about investing in the restaurant. Anthony's lesson of the day? Learn to respect Italian recipes. Now let's move on to something as normal as a pork chop, a cut of meat you've probably eaten many times. But at Miss Jean's Southern Cuisine, they have a peculiar way of presenting it. At this restaurant in Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania, Gordon had a hard time ordering his food because most of the items on the menu were not available. Fortunately, they did have a pork chop, and the restaurant was quite patriotic because the piece had the shape of a US map. Fucking pressing is that. Despite that funny moment, the pork chop was so greasy and dry at the same time that even the flies weren't interested in it. God bless America. Time to introduce some fondue to this list. Something that the owners at Handlebar were not very good at, or maybe too good at. You see, the idea of fondue is to cook your own meat in a small pot. But at the Handlebar, they took this idea so literally that they served Ramsey a platter of raw meat. Right, put that in. Unfortunately, the prayer didn't end up working because what came out of that pan was dog food. Rancid, pointless, tasteless, and a complete joke. And he's right. How are you going to serve an excellent filet mignon in a deep fryer format? It loses all appeal. Next on this list are the Chitlins from Blackberries, a Plainfield, New Jersey restaurant. On their own, Chitlins are quite common especially in the UK, so Ramsey has a lot of experience with the dish. However, Shelley, the owner of Blackberries, thought she could revolutionize chitlins if they looked like a biological threat. I'm not exaggerating, just look at that. 
First, the chitlins spend some time in the microwave, as a little extra heat never hurts. After that, they're ready to be introduced to Chef Ramsay, who is not only surprised by their terrible appearance, but by their strange smell. To pray to God before I put any of that in my mouth. Apparently, the prayers don't work, because as soon as he tasted the chitlins, Gordon went straight to the bathroom to throw up. Shelly, I hope you're embarrassed about that. <laughs> Wow, with just that clip, we can guess why blackberries ended up failing. We end with a dish for vegetarians, something that's characterized by the lack of meat. It seems too obvious to explain that, but at Dylan's restaurant in New York, they didn't quite understand this simple concept. When Gordon receives a vegetarian sampler as an appetizer, the kitchen team didn't have the necessary ingredients, so they put some lamb on his plate so it wouldn't look so empty. There are a lot of things wrong here. How are you going to host a chef like Gordon with a few ingredients in your kitchen? And worse, how are you going to improvise with a vegetarian dish by adding some meat to it? Vegetarian? He just had a meat one. And that's the problem when you hire someone who doesn't speak English. They were rather lucky that Ramsay was the one who tasted that dish because an average customer might have sued them. A vegetarian dish with meat. I still can't believe it. As we have seen, there are plenty of weird dishes in Kitchen Nightmares and there are still some to be named. But I consider this list the most interesting ones for different reasons. What they all had in common was that they put Chef Ramsay's stomach at risk. There are ideas so creative that it's better to keep them as ideas, especially the sushi pizza.